yet. Because he said you receive, then you have. In your spirit, you must receive. When we fail to receive, then we cannot have them. We must receive. Hallelujah. How do we receive? We open up our spirit man to the word of God. Whatever God says it is, then it is. church and this is where God is doing great things and raising leaders in our societies we thank you father for this house thank you for the commission thank you father for the set man of this house thank you for the vision for TPC we glorify your name oh God in Jesus name amen, amen. so if today is your first time worshiping with us this morning, you are in for a good thing. So I want you to welcome your neighbor on the right and on the left. Tell them, welcome to the presence of God. And to those who are online, you are also welcome to the presence of God this morning. Hallelujah. If you are a family, give yourself a high five at home, smile at each other, and tell yourselves, you are looking good. Hallelujah. Glory be to Jesus. We are continuing with our theme, prayers, for this month. I want to believe we are learning. We are learning and digesting God's word. It is important for us to uh, learn as we go through this subject. And I know that more teaching, more learning is going to happen in this house. Where there is teaching, there is maturity. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. So teaching is good for you and me, actually. It makes us, it, it promotes us from that primary or crash level to a higher standard. Hallelujah. In Christ Jesus. It sets us on a platform that we can walk with the Father with boldness with no inferiority complex at all, at all. Hallelujah. Amen. Last Sunday was powerful. We had a great time with a man of God that visited us. Wednesday was powerful. We had our pastor, Pastor Benga Ojo, minister to us on Wednesday. And I keep saying it now, we are not repeating what we say on Sunday, on Wednesdays. So for you to grow, you have to attend Wednesday services. Do not miss it for anything. You know, there was a man uh, in the Bible called Zechariah, the father of John the Baptist. Himself and his wife, they have been married for so many years, no children, and they'll be praying for that. And then angel of God was dispatched to give him the good news that the wife shall conceive a son. Guess where the angel went to? He went to meet Zachariah in the temple. Zachariah at that time has a house. He has a house address. Why didn't the angel go there? He didn't. He went to his place of worship to wait for him, to give him that good news. Don't miss the Wednesday services because there is something for you that needs to be delivered to you and you will receive it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So we are going to continue in that wise, uh, talking on the theme prayers. The last time I ministered, we studied God's word and we studied one of the types of prayer. I don't know if you have forgotten, but you can remind me if you have not. What type of prayer did we talk about? Prayer of agreement. Brilliant people. Hallelujah. 
prayer of agreement. Now, just to do like, you know, when you go to school, um, when you come to church, it's like school. Do you know that? I want you to relax. Some of you are sitting like this. Relax. How do you say it in Zulu to relax? Huh? Pon. Relax. Okay, say it to me in Sutu. The Zulus are not talking. What about Sutu? Kikate. Yes, yes. Kike clay. <laughs> All right. Maybe I didn't say it properly, but those who understand do. What I'm trying to say is relax. Hallelujah. Enjoy the service and learn from it. Glory be to Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. We were, um, we studied the prayer of agreement last uh, upper Sunday, and we said, uh, to reiterate some of the things we said, we said prayer is one of the primary things we all do. There is no one that says, I've been born again, I've been in Christ for 30 years, and therefore I have matured enough, I don't need to pray. Or is there a situation of somebody saying, you know what, I'm so young, I just gave my life to Christ six months ago, so I have not grown, so I don't need to pray. Wherever level you are, whether two minutes ago or 20 years ago, you came into the kingdom of God, we all pray. We are required to pray. So there is no exclusion to praying. Fundamental things we need to understand about prayer we pray to God the Father in the name of Jesus. Can we say it together? We pray to who? In whose name? Okay. I can hear more men replying and participating. I want us to do it one more time. We pray to who? Sisters, wait now, where are you? We pray to who? Okay, we are warming up. In whose name? In Jesus' name. So, therefore, when I'm praying, I cannot pray and say, um, Jesus, I want you to provide job for me in the name of Jesus. Jesus, I need job in the name of Jesus. It's not correct prayer, but we direct our request to who? To the Father. In the name of his son, Jesus Christ. Prayer of agreement, therefore, according to our scripture, says that when two of us agree on earth, if you remember, as touching anything, what will happen? It shall be done or granted unto us. So one of the rules of prayers of agreement is one who can remind me. Thank you. Number one, we must agree. Oh, number one, there must be more than one praying. Two, three, praying. Hallelujah. Number two, rules of prayer of agreement. We must be in agreement. Thank, wow, you listen, man. Hallelujah. We must be in agreement. Number three, we must agree on the same thing. We cannot agree differently. It doesn't work. You break the rules. You play football. You carry the ball with your hands. You are playing with another rule. You will be penalized for that. The same thing with prayers. There are principles that guide each prayer. So prayer of agreement, we agree on one thing or two things. Hallelujah. And then we pray together. The scripture says, it shall be done unto us. Now, I want us to go to the next prayer. I think I did mention that. Who can remind me that? The next prayer. Thank you. Prayer of petition. I'm enjoying you. We can make this very interactive, you know. Prayer of petition. Some will call it prayer of authority. Some will call it prayer of, let me say the third, um, prayer of authority, of petition. And I might need to borrow this. Okay. 
Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. Yes. Prayer of petition, prayer of authority, or prayer of faith. We are referring to the same thing. So you may pick up a, a book, and an author is talking about prayer of petition. Another person will call it prayer of authority. Another person will call it prayer of faith. We are referring to the same uh, prayer and the, the same principles guiding them. Now, I don't want you to lose me on this one. Because this is one of the types of prayers commonly prayed by all Christians. So it means it has something to do with you, and it has something to do with me. Let's go to the book of Mark chapter 11 and verse 24. We are going to learn, and it will benefit us. The book of Mark 11 and 24. I'm sure some of you are already quoting it, you know, by heart. The book of Mark chapter 11 verse 24. Hallelujah. Can you please read with me? One, two, three, go. Therefore, I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them. Thank you. Can we read it one more time? One, two, three, go. Therefore, I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe and you will have them. Okay. Since this is a learning church and we are growing, we need to pay attention to this type of prayer. Now it says, therefore, whatever I say, whatever, therefore, I say to you, whatever things. So in this prayer, we are not limited to just one thing. It says, whatever things. It could be finances. It could be something you have not even read of in the Bible that somebody is asking for. There is no blueprint in the Bible. But you have need of it. He says, whatever it is, wherever you use the word whatever, there is nothing else left out of it. So rule number one, anything can be asked for in this prayer. Then he says, whatever things you ask when you pray, I want us to compare this with the prayer of agreement. Whatever thing you ask for. Prayer of agreement says, when two of us shall agree concerning a thing, two and more people in prayer of agreement. But this prayer is talking to me. It's just me. So in this prayer of faith, authority, it involves only me and God. I don't need you, unfortunately. <laughs> I don't need to have an agreement with you. I can always pray this prayer all by myself because the scripture says, whatever things I ask, I, not they, not we, not many, I ask um, when I pray, then I'm going to break it down. So whatever thing, everything is included that I, not a crowd, to one person talking to God, when I ask, and then I pray. So in this prayer, we ask. Hallelujah. In this prayer, we do what? This is a prayer we ask. Hallelujah. I'm, I'm still using that verse, if you don't mind. Oh, maybe it's here. Hallelujah. He says, um, I will use this. Oh, okay. Then he says, Ask when, when you pray. So this type of prayer requires me to pray. While I am praying, I've got to ask. Can I use that word? I've got to ask. I want you to relax. I don't want to use the professorship language, you know. Acade oh, when I, I, I recently had to do some academic work. Oh, my God. I thought writing professional formal letter in the office is the same thing as academic writing. Oh boy, my first assignment, it was full of red lines. Lines and comments and commentary and references. Oh boy, the language is so different. You didn't tell me, you know. It's not fair. I ran into it, they slapped me right and left. I had to come back and say, oh, oh is this how it feels like? Hallelujah. Glory be to Jesus. So it says, 
When you pray, you ask. Then there is something important that is next to this. It says, believe. I want you to, listen, to pay attention to the words that are used here. They are very important because the Spirit of God wants us to learn something here. He says, believe that you receive them. Believe that you receive them. Then the next night says, and you will have them. Believe that you receive. Then you have them. Please digest it. Believe that you receive. So he's using the word receive. And then he says, after you have received, then you will have. Is it sinking in? So when I pray this prayer, it's a prayer of faith. So while I am praying, I must believe that I receive them. This is a thing. I want you to pay attention. When you receive them, you are not receiving physically yet. Because he said you receive, then you have. In your spirit, you must receive. When we fail to receive, then we cannot have them. We must receive Hallelujah. How do we receive? We open up our spirit man to the word of God. Whatever God says it is, then it is. This is not where I am smart now. And I can, uh, I, I can adjust the scripture and, and, and try to, to explain it. You know, there is a way these days the atmosphere has been created that Things in the Bible are being debated and we are being told they are not relevant anymore. So there is a little bit of adjustment and tweeting. Once we move the goalpost, we cannot score. Once you tweet the word of God, you change it. You cannot get the result that the word promised. We have moved the goalpost. So when you pray this prayer alone, with God. You must receive by faith that whatever I am praying for, I have received it. Then it will manifest in the physical and then you will have the physical result. Somebody shout hallelujah. So there is where people are fall short because they cannot see God. They find it hard to accept what God says. Human beings, what we can touch, what we can see, what we can feel, we tend to believe them more than what we can't see. God is invisible. Jesus Christ said, God is a spirit. How many of you have seen spirits before? I know one of our brother's name is spirit, you know. I've seen that one. Hallelujah. If you know, you know. Glory be to Jesus. But I'm not talking about that. How many of us have seen God in physical form? None. But he exists. Hallelujah. So when you are receiving from God, it's got to be in your heart. You have to believe God for what he says. That is the rule that underpins this prayer. You've got to believe it. Failure to believe it is failure to receive. And failure to receive is failure to have. So if you don't believe, you cannot receive. So then where do we work on? We work on our believing. That part of believing is where we have to work on. Some people will call you crazy when you believe God. Some people will consider you not smart enough because you believe God. Hallelujah. You know, Jesus told of a parable of a man. He was asking, who is your neighbor? He says, there is this man who went on a journey and he met this other guy that has been robbed, that has been stabbed, beaten up and left for the dead. 
This man came along, the good Samaritan, and he picked up this beaten man, and he took him to the inns, to the hospital, where he can be cared for, cared for, and he paid for his treatment. He prayed for his stay in that hotel, in that hospital. Everything he needed. Jesus now asked, who is your neighbor? This man, if we were to interpret it in our day language, no don't let me say no. Very few people will say it is possible. That you don't know somebody, you pick them up, you pay for their hospital bill, you ask nurse, you hire a nurse to look after them and nurse them back to life. You did all that for somebody you don't know. Ah, uh, uh, come on now. Look at me, I'm smart. I don't think you're right. But the scripture says there was a man. Hallelujah. So in the, in, in the current atmosphere, there are things about God that they are, we have been led to question and not believe. And therefore, it's affecting our believing and our receiving. There are so many people in the body of Christ. They want miracles, but they don't believe in miracles. What do I mean? Oh, they want healing in their body. But when they hear of somebody being healed, guess what? We don't know what they did, though. Isn't it we know some pastors, you know, they are doing funny, funny things. They are organizing miracles, arranging it, and all that. We don't believe it. So we are in the body of Christ. We want miracles, but we don't believe in miracles. Then when you pray, you are in a position not to believe and you cannot receive. That is why the church is full of people praying, not receiving. Our hearts has been turned against the teaching of God. We try to intellectualize everything that we hear. Can I give you another example? The scripture says, Therefore a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become what? One flesh. And in our ability to understand God and to help God, we are trying so well to help God in our intellectuality. Then you hear people say, including Christians, they will call their spouse my better half. How did they come to that conclusion that the spouse is a better half? Why? Because when the two come together, they become one. And therefore, mathematically, like you do that three dots, therefore, <laughs> the conclusion is, if two plus two, one plus one equals to one, therefore, one must be equals to half. And therefore, half plus half equal to one. Go ahead and clap for me. <laughs> Hallelujah. So we say it innocently, my better half. But that was not God's calculation. God was not using calculator to calculate figures. He was calculating spirit beings. No wonder he says one will chase a thousand. And two will chase how many? Ten thousand. Tell me what formula you use for that. So there are some things God says, you just take it like that. Trying to use our intellectuality to understand, we result in us not believing and us not receiving. I'm challenging that part. There are so many good Christians in churches. Good people. They love God. They are not evil people. They, they, they stand up for the things of God. But because of the atmosphere, their heart has been recalibrated in such a way we doubt what God says. And we are not even recognizing it. So when we are praying on one hand, on the back, by the back, in the back of our heads, we are also doubting if ever this is possible. If we were to talk about God parting the Red Sea, you will see the people in church. The way they will use, I don't know what formula they use there. We used to use Pythagoras theorem. I don't know if it's relevant anymore. They will use Pythagoras theorem. They will use the Y, the S equals to D. You know, raised to power three divided by four. And then 
there will be some other equation and they will prove to you that it is not possible. And they are Christians. And to even make it more, uh, more believing, they hold important position in Christendom. And they will tell you it's not possible. So what happened? The rest are just following. Oh, it's not possible. So why are you praying at all? If it is not possible, you doubt miracles. You doubt the, the, the sudden interference of God in the affairs of man. You doubt it. Why are you praying at all? I challenge you this morning to believe in what God says. Hallelujah. I challenge your faith to believe like a baby. Hallelujah. I challenge your faith to drop all those things you have been told and take God for it. Hallelujah. So the scripture says, Mark eleven twenty four. 24. Thank you. Can you please put it up again? Thank you, Jesus. Mark eleven twenty four. Oh, thank you, Jesus. You are so wonderful. God is so wonderful. Hallelujah. Is my mark still? Okay, I will read from here. No, it's fine. I can read from here. Therefore, I say to you, whatever things I pray, I need you to put your name there. Whatever things I, I, I ask when I pray, I believe that I receive it. And I will have them. Can we do it just one more time? Therefore, I say to you, I believe that I receive them and I shall have them. How many of you want to have them? Hallelujah. And you shall have them in Jesus' name. You shall have them in Jesus' name. You shall have them in the name of Jesus. Whatsoever you believe, you shall have them in the name of Jesus. So this, uh, this scripture tells us the rules. When we pray and we ask God, we must believe that we receive them. And you don't need anyone to participate in this type of prayer. You can pray it alone. So what is this that is challenging you? Remember he says, whatsoever. Hallelujah. Remember the story of Anna, uh, the story of Esther. Whatsoever that you pray, believe. Esther said, I will fast and I will pray. I will go in to the king without being asked. If I perish, I perish. But Esther prayed, believing that God will answer. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. I want to encourage you this morning. Whenever you pray. Release your faith to receive. That part of receiving by faith is important for us to have in them. In other words, when I pray and I do not believe that I receive, it means I pray, but I don't believe. But anyway, I am praying. The scripture, if we flip it the other way, says I cannot receive them, and therefore they cannot manifest in the physical. Glory be to Jesus. Amen. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Is the word of God helping somebody this morning? So when you go back into your closet when you pray, open your mind up and believe. If you know that you are still struggling to receive, do it again. Do it again. When you think, at the back of my mind, I have not gotten to the point of believing that I have received it. You know, when you receive something, it's already yours. There is a way you walk. There is a way you conduct yourself. There is a way you talk. Hallelujah. Start talking and start conducting yourself like that. You know, there is this thing that marvels me that human beings we do. 
In the public sector, if you work for the government, um, there is this thing they promise you, retirement benefit, isn't it? So when you, when you retire, you will get X amount of money for retirement benefits. Government promised us. Can I ask you, who is that government? Have you seen that government? So government promised us. We therefore spend the rest of our 30 years working in whatever sector with that understanding and believing it that what? When I retire, I am going to have X, Y amounts of, of money because it has been promised unto us. Some even make plans for that money. But who promised you government? Have you ever touched government? Have you ever spoken to government? No. But there is a paper that is saying that is the rule. And you believe it and you plan your life. 30, 40 working years of your life based on what somebody said. How much more God? I'm staring somebody's faith up this morning. How much more God? Will he say it? Will he not do it? God says the things that I've uttered out of my mouth, I will not change them. What are they said to you? He says, I will bring my people out of Egypt. Did they bring them out? Yes. He, who did he use? He used Moses. Moses didn't part the Red Sea. God did. Moses didn't provide the manna. God did. He says, I will bring them up. Did they say it? Yes. Did they bring them out? Yes. If he has said it concerning you, he will do it. Amen. So we need to drop all those, um, those, those silly arguments about God. If you want to receive from God, you just have to take him for his word. God is not coming to prove that I'm God to you. Let me break down to you. God is not coming down to prove that I am God so that you can believe. He has sent his word. And he has given us his fivefold ministry to do the job. So if the prophet, the teachers, the evangelists, the fivefold ministry are speaking, you are still doubting. I don't know what help will reach you. Read the word of God and believe it. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody shout a bigger hallelujah. A bigger hallelujah. God bless you in Jesus name. So this prayer is what we pray most of the time. And it is important that we understand the rules so that we can apply it. You see the enemy of man. You see this enemy that is enemy of man. It's not just enemy of Christians. The devil. That is what human beings don't know. He is the enemy of souls. It doesn't matter what religion you are practicing. The devil is the enemy of souls. So he's not sparing some people after Christians, but he's not after these other people. No, he's after everybody. His mandate is to steal, to kill, and to destroy. What is he stealing? He's trying to steal the word of God from you before you believe it. Because he dread you believing God's word. He knows once word of God mixes with your spirit and faith, hallelujah, he can't stop you. So his first reaction is to make sure you don't believe that word. No wonder the world is messed up. He doesn't want you to believe. He can use Muslim to destroy Christian, Christian to destroy Muslim. He doesn't care whatever you are. He is just enemies of souls. He knows this rule and is using it because he's smart. And you are smarter. Take that same word that has been spoken. Run with it in your spirit, man. Hallelujah. So when you go into your closet, you go with that understanding, not in, in, thank you, ignorantly. Sweet lips, you know. <laughs> not ignorantly, but you go with knowledge and understanding. You've got to have knowledge of God's word. You cannot refuse God's word. You cannot pretend that God's word does not work. It has principles. You say the life, the person of Christ, 
We are talking about prayers. The person of Jesus Christ brings salvation to us. We enjoy fellowshipping with his, his person. But the principles of Jesus govern life. So the people in the world, they rejected the person of Jesus. They rejected salvation. They don't recognize him. But guess what? They took his principle. They go for charity work. They donate billions and billions for charity. Yet they get richer. Principles of God. Give and it shall be given back to you. Good measure. Press down. Shaking together and running over. If I were to ask both on site and online, when last did you give to God? Some have taken this period of COVID. Ah, I don't need to give to God though. I'm smarter. You know. So we are online. I don't come to church. It means I don't need to give. A number of Christians have taken that stand. So they stop giving. But the devil knows. Give and it shall be given to you. It is spiritual law. Whether Christian or not, it works. So you see the non-Christian, they took the principle of Jesus. They kept giving. And they keep receiving. Because that principle works for whosoever, whatsoever, anytime, anywhere. But the children of God, we dance the presence of Jesus. We feel the anointing. We bow down. We sweat. We cry in his presence. Then when we go out, we dump the principles in the bin. No wonder we have so many people praying so fervently, but they are poor. When last did you give God an offering? Both online and on site, I'm talking to you. Have you taken COVID as an excuse not to give to God anymore? I don't come to church. I don't need to give. This morning, repent. Because God needs your substance to work on it to reach you. Your enemy is busy accusing you. Why will God want to do something? And you are cooperating with him by withholding. But God, you give him a reason. Hallelujah. You give to God. Hallelujah. You give boldly to God. You intentionally give to God. And watch God do something in your life. Somebody shout hallelujah. So when you pray, believe in your heart. Hallelujah. Some of us, before we got married, we have that dream of a good home. Somebody prophesy. Our moms and fathers, they pray for us concerning home. So we have this beautiful of a home, peaceful home, loving home. But what are we doing to our homes right now? Are we conducting our marriages in, that, in the line that promotes that, mar that promotes that dream? Hallelujah. Are we doing things to make that dream a reality? Are we withholding what we need to do to make it a reality? How are you treating your spouse? Whatsoever. I ask when I pray. I pray for a good marriage. But am I working it out in my home? How do I speak to my spouse? Hallelujah. How do I treat my... What is the other person? Not half. We got over that. Hallelujah. We have been delivered from half. Hallelujah. My other better person. Hallelujah. How do I talk to them? How do I treat them? It matters. You need to believe that what you have received from him, that it will manifest in your home in the name of Jesus Christ. So if you speak to your spouse anyhow, today you are delivered from that in the name of Jesus. If you treat your wife, husband anyhow, today marks the last day you will treat them anyhow in the name of Jesus. Somebody shout hallelujah. So when I go into my closet, what do I do? I pray. How many of us are ready to pray? Glory be to Jesus. Glory be to Jesus. I need to touch quickly on something before I go. I can set the time. Hallelujah. So this prayer, we'll pray it. But there's something important. I will link it to the other prayer type of prayer. Or let me, okay. This is the first one we talked 
about right now is the prayer of faith, prayer of petition, and prayer of authority. Let's look into another prayer before I step down. Because this is the season of teaching, coming to school. And at the end of the day, we will be promoted. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory be to Jesus. I want us to look into, there are different types of prayers. Um, we have not touched all. I want us to look at the prayer of intercession. And I'm going to link them together and we are going to pray. Prayer of intercession. Oh, dear, dear, dear Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. Let's quickly go to the book of Romans chapter 8 and verse 26. The book of Romans chapter 8 and verse 26. Oh, there is nothing you cannot do. If you have said it, you will do it. Hallelujah. If you have said it, you will do it. I've got to walk in that. I've got to believe it. Anyone saying otherwise, I have to adjust myself, position myself. I just have to believe it that if he has said it, he will do it. Hallelujah. Glory be to Jesus. Quickly, Romans 8, 26. It says, likewise, the spirit also helps in our weaknesses. For we do not know what we should pray for as we ought. But the spirit himself makes intercession for us with groaning which cannot be uttered. Now, it says we... <laughs> The Spirit help us in our weakness when we pray. For we do not know what to pray for. This is the scripture on which prayer of intersection is resting on. We do not know what to pray for. Watch out. This scripture did not say we do not know how to pray. What he's saying is we do not know what. What and how are different. And he says, by the way, if you have to reason it out, I do not know what to pray for. Wait a minute. If I'm hungry, don't, you, don't I know what to pray for? Come on, tell, talk to me. What am I going to pray for if I'm hungry? I've not eaten for three days. What am I going to pray for? I'm going to pray for food. So what is this scripture talking about? That I don't know what to pray for. I do. If I'm hungry, I pray for food. If I lack resources, I can put a roof over my head. I can put good clothing on myself. I need money. What am I going to pray for? I'm going to pray for a good job. So I know what to pray for. But this scripture is not talking about prayer of agreement. It's not talking about prayer of petition or authority or faith. This prayer, this scripture is talking about intercessory prayer intercessory prayer is when you stand for somebody else someone else another city and you pray for them you may know them you know, may not know them but you pray for them for example generally i will pray for member of tpc for provision for protection that wherever you go you are favored that your cv gains uh, attention of the right people i pray for everyone but there are times you pray for people specifically. And this scripture says, I don't know how. For example, can I come down here? Is it okay with the cameraman? Is it okay? Uh, is it okay? I'm looking at somebody that I don't really... Can I go into the crowd? People are like, hmm, they are going to show me on. Yes, you should be shown. Okay, let me say for example, this brother just joined us of recent. Brother Sejo, right? Sejo. Sorry? Sergio. Hallelujah. The camera is on you now. So smile. <laughs> I've not really spoken that much with this gentleman. I do not know him that much. I don't know the needs in his life. I'm saying it because he's here. We hardly chat. He has never told me what he needs. So if I have to pray for him, I'm going to pray blindly. Because I don't know the needs 
in his life. I don't know what to pray for. But when I go in into the place of intercession, how do I pray for that brother? I don't know his needs. He says, the spirit helps me to pray because I do not know what to pray for that brother. I don't know. I remember many years ago growing up uh, as a young believer in that church I grew in, in our cell groups, we were trained. We will pray for nations where Christians were being killed. We will pray for nations where Christians were being beheaded for being Christians. And it's still happening now. I remember it was the group that prayed for Russia. There was a time, once upon a time, the Bible was banned in Russia. It was a criminal offense. We will put our hands on the globe and pray for Russia. But how do we pray for the pastors, for the church on the ground there? We do not know. But the Spirit helped our infirmity. So when we pray in intercessory prayer, we've got to pray in the Spirit. Our understanding limits what we can pray for because we do not have the knowledge. So, the spirit that knows what is happening there, I yield myself to that spirit to pray through me so I can make the right request on behalf of China, on behalf of Russia, on behalf of Bahrain, on behalf of Iraq, the Christians there, on behalf of Bangladesh, Pakistan, the Christians there. I will pray in the spirit and make those requests to the Father so that they may be granted. That is why I don't get it when some Christians are still arguing. We don't pray in tongues. You don't pray in tongues. Tell me, the scriptures say, are they all prophets? Are they all speaking in tongues? Nonsense. This script, let's go to the book of Mark. Let me show you what Jesus, Mark 16, um, verse 16, 18, 18. Mark 16, 18. Hallelujah. It may be shown just on that. I don't mind. Um, everybody can see it. We can all see it, right? This is Jesus because of time. After he has resurrected, he met his disciples on the way. They didn't recognize him. So this is part of it. It started from verse 14. But because of time, I'm cutting it short. He says, they will take up serpent. Talking about Christians. Please, for those who have listened to the argument, we don't pray in tongues. Look at the departing word of Jesus Christ. They have reminded us again and again that when a man is going away, he leaves instruction that are important to him. That is why people write wills. Because it is important to them how their properties should be distributed. Hallelujah. So Jesus was giving instruction, last minute instructions to his disciples. He says, this is how you recognize Christians. He now said, they will take up serpents. And if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. He says, that is what you see. And he tells you that person is a Christian. Then he says, they will lay hands on the sick. Oh, I think I've jumped where I want to. Can I go to 17, please? Thank you. And these signs will follow those who believe in my name. They will cast out demons. We all believe that, don't we? Hallelujah. They will speak. Can you please finish that part? With what? Who said this? Jesus. Everyone that is telling you, did Jesus speak in tongues himself? They don't know what they are saying. They are ignorant of the Bible. Let's call a spade a spade. They may be good people. They are not evil. But that is their understanding at that time of the Bible. This is what Jesus, who can correct Jesus, tell me. This is in red letter in our Bibles. Jesus saying that. That they will take up serpents. They will cast out demons. He says they will speak in new tongues. Why do we believe they will cast out demons? But we say no, they can't speak in tongues. Why are we selective in our believing? These are the words of Jesus when he was departing. They will speak in tongues. Hallelujah. 
So if you are in this place, you are still, I don't speak in tongues. It's not that you are evil. It's not that you are bad. It's what has been taught to you. I want you to renew your mind this morning. This is Jesus, not Pastor Titi. If you check your own Bible, the one you bought by yourself, it's there. Your copy of the Bible. Jesus is right there talking to you that these new believers that will come after I have departed, that will believe in my name even though they don't see me, they will cast out demons, they will take up serpents, it will not hurt them. They will speak in new tongues. Jesus said that. So don't leave here. Pastor Titi said, no. Jesus said that. Hallelujah. They will speak with new tongues. Glory be to Jesus. So in intercession, the scripture makes me to understand, I don't know how to pray. I don't know what to pray, not how. I don't know what to pray for that person that I'm praying for. There are some things happening in their lives. They have not told me, but I can sense on easiness in my spirit to pray. He says that the spirit will help me to pray. And when I'm praying, he says, I will groan. <laughs> Hallelujah. He says, I will express that prayer in groanings. Hallelujah. What is that? That groaning, that prayer. Prayer I'm praying that the spirit is praying through me. They are not things I can articulate with words. So you go, mm. oh God, <laughs> you burst out laughing. But ask that person that busted out laughing. He can interpret that love because something was speaking in him. The Holy Spirit was praying through him. Hallelujah. He says with on with 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 the spirit. Hallelujah. He says, ha, ah, glory be to Jesus. Glory be to Jesus. Glory be to Jesus. There is nothing you cannot do. There is no mountain you cannot move. If you have said it, then you will do it. You have a track record of keeping your word. You're not about to stop doing it now. The Spirit of God is here. If you have not spoken in tongues, you are scared that you might receive an evil spirit. You are just scared because of the things you've heard. Today is the day of setting free. Because he said, you will cast out demons. You will pray. Demons will listen to you. And he says, you will speak in tongues. It's the same sentence that is spoke there. Hallelujah. Glory be to Jesus. I don't want distraction, please. Let distractions be minimized. Hallelujah. There are some people that are ready to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. And I want the instrumentalists to also keen in. Hallelujah. And play those songs that fit into the atmosphere. I can sense God is about to do something. Hallelujah. God is about to let loose in somebody in this place. This morning in the name of Jesus Christ. So the scripture says... My infirmity is helped. He says, my burden, the burden to pray. You've been in a place, you've been feeling like you are praying, but you have been postponing it. That is the Holy Spirit wanting to find expression through you. You know what happened to you? You are a spirit. You are made by God who is a spirit. The spirit that knows the heart of the Father at every time, every point in time. He's bringing the information to you and he's praying through you. Hallelujah. When you pray in that way, you are no longer the one praying when you are praying that way can i tell you you want to remember whether there is pap left from yesterday you know when we're praying our understanding sometimes you are praying hallelujah you just oh chineke did i switch off the stove hey it comes to your mind when you are praying sometimes some people you see them checking out their shoes and looking is has anybody seen the stain on my shoe when you are praying your understanding but when you pray on this level, 
you are not praying. The Holy Spirit that knows the heart of the Father at every point in time is using your body to make petition to the Father so that results can come down. I want us to rise up on our feet this morning. We are going to pray. We are going to intercede. Last time I pray, I said there are people in our midst. The next meal, they don't know where it's coming from. The next rent, they don't know where it's coming from. If they use up their savings, by the end of April, May, nothing. We can pray to Almighty. We can intercede. Now, when you are interceding, you are not interceding for yourself. You are speaking for other people. Hallelujah. Glory be to Jesus. So I want us to close our eyes and position ourselves. Hallelujah. If he has said it, he will do it. Hallelujah.